Bitcoin, Bitcoin is crashing. We're on a bounce this week, but Bitcoin has been crashing for months. Why? I think there's a number of factors at play. I think the main factor is if you think of the marginal investor in Bitcoin, the average person, the, the adoption, right? Those people have seen prices rise 10% in terms of the everyday cost of living, but the wages haven't gone up that much. So what you've taken is marginal consumption away or their ability to invest, stick a few more dollars into Bitcoin. That has gone left the market. We've seen network growth slow down. The other thing that happened was obviously the Chinese left the market. And so that's left the market in a slightly less stable way because you've taken out a whole bunch of demand. Now, there are plenty of Chinese still in the market, but you took out a lot of that. So with those two factors and then kind of the overall sort of fear of the tightening of monetary policy and what that could do to other financial markets. You know, if you think there's new participants in this now, there's people like hedge funds. And if they're, you know, one portfolio is blowing up, they end up having to reduce risk elsewhere. So everything starts becoming a bit correlated. So I think those were the primary drivers behind what's been going on. Uh, I recently heard that you only hold one Bitcoin now. My question is, why? You know the answer to this. Generally speaking, listen, I am, I understand there's a philosophy to the space and people want there to be, you know, Bitcoin at the base center of money and that may end up playing out over time. But my job is as an investor, not a philosopher. And my job as an investor is to look for better returns. So a long time ago, about a year and a half ago, I switched most of my Bitcoin holdings into ETH and then I bought a basket of, of alts of different to get different exposure to different parts of the market because you don't really know what's going to get traction and what's not. So over time, I continued to reallocate my Bitcoin into ETH. Um, I always wanted to keep a bit of Bitcoin because you want to you know, cheer for the team as well. But also, you know, the other the thing that I get people, Bitcoin maxes hate me for is like, this is a network and a community. If you are fundamentally awful to people joining your community, people want to leave. And that's just a matter of fact. And if you get picked on every time you say anything that could possibly be perceived as anything negative um, on Bitcoin, then you after a while you think, why even bother? Now, you'd bother if it was outperforming, but it's not. And I think the network growth in Bitcoin has been slower than people have expected. And this is one of the reasons. I mean, institutions, just don't like this kind of stuff the toxicity that can exist i mean there's tons of good people in bitcoin and you know i understand the philosophy and if that's your point of view on the philosophy great but don't attack other people because then it becomes like a rel religion and they become exclusive and not inclusive if you're not careful and that's that that's the issue i had so i always want to retain some bitcoin but it's not going to be my core holding unless i think it's going to outperform which i don't think it will tyler winklevoss catherine kathy wood you know, a lot of notable investors, they believe Bitcoin will reach at least $500,000 per coin, you know, equating to the market cap of gold. Would you agree with that possibility as well? Yeah, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Very cool. cool. And how do you how think it gets there? It gets there, I think. I don't think it's going to be as much retail adoption. I think that moves elsewhere within the crypto Web3 kind of world. Um, I think it's actually going to be driven by sovereign wealth funds, large asset allocation, stuff of that type. I think we're only just starting to see that. But you know, it, it, if, it's, if it holds true to its hypothesis that it is a base layer of money, then really it should be for those who accumulate base layer of money, people like sovereign wealth funds, central banks and, and others. Um, because in theory, if that's correct, then it's a less speculative or risky asset, therefore it has less returns over time. And that's okay too. There's nothing wrong with that. Ethereum in 2022, what are your thoughts? I think, it, I mean, I got the last quarter wrong last year, so what, who am I to be the right person <laughs> to get at this, this one right? My guess, I still think higher. I still think higher. I still think we actually got a, a, a strong run to come. I think these kind of, this kind of year-long sideways correction that we've essentially had is just a springing board to further gains as more adoption rolls out, more use cases roll out. Uh, etc. Would you still call ETH one of the greatest trades in the world? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I still think risk adjusted, ETH will do extremely well over time. It's like a chain of prestige now for things to be built on because it is the more decentralized of all of the other layer ones. So 
It makes sense to me. I think with the change towards ETH 2.0 coming as well, I think that narrative will build over time as well. So I still think the upside in ETH is massive um, in terms of market cap. Where could it go? You know, it could still, it can go another 10x from here in terms of market cap alone. Um, over what period of time? Who knows? Do you think Ethereum will flip Bitcoin in 2022 or do you think it'll flip Bitcoin ever? Yeah, I think it will. Whether it's 2022 or not, don't really have a strong view. My guess is probably, probably. And, and again, that shouldn't be taken as, oh, ETH's better than Bitcoin. They, it's like comparing Apple's market cap with Tesla's market cap. They're just two entirely different things and that's okay. So the other layer ones may well outperform, but you have more risk in them. So we've seen, for example, Solana got tested over this um, recent sell-off and the chain's still a bit clunky. It has its own set of problems. And all of these come with different sets of problems. But in the right market, because they're seeing earlier adoption, the rate of change goes up faster. So from going from 1 billion to 2 billion is much easier than going from 10 billion to 20 billion or 300 billion to 600 billion. So the rate of change terms, they can perform very well, but they're riskier. So ETH has that balance of being more risky than Bitcoin, because it's less decentralized, we talked about before, less pure, but it still has the massive network adoption that we're looking for, which is the thing that drives prices. And network adoption is just not people buying it, it's people using it and applications being built on it. It's how you connect all the people on the network. And ETH is still far superior than anything else, but these others are coming up from a lower base. So it's that balance of risk reward. I mean, there will be lots of times you'll have FOMO if you own ETH because something else will do a lot better. Now, that's what the Bitcoin um, investors will say too is, okay, fine, other, other chains may outperform, but we're happy with the security and the safety of owning Bitcoin, and that's fine too. There's always a risk curve somewhere across all financial markets. When you call it the greatest trade in the world, to me, that means there's a selling point. You buy it and sell it, that's a trade. Will you be selling the news on ETH 2.0? It depends whether it goes into the news on a high or into the news on a low. You know, it depends how the price action is. Now, and ETH won't remain the greatest trade forever. You know, don't forget, I, I bought ETH, at, I don't even remember what price. It was a long way ago and a lot lower. So, you know, that's proven itself out. It did 500% last year or 480%. So, you know, it, you don't have to reprove the trade every year now for my entry price. Will I trade out of ETH into something else? For sure. When? No idea. Or will I just add other um, tokens, protocols, opportunities, and just keep my ETH holding? I really don't know. Um, I keep it fluid. Um, unless I see something that fundamentally seems wrong. Maybe the sharding on ETH allows for breakages that we didn't perceive and it becomes more difficult to use when you go to ETH 2.0 and it takes a while to get it right. Well, maybe things move to other chains for a while and, and that's fine too. So it's not a crusade for me. It's an opportunistic um, investment. Um, I think it's a long-term investment. I don't really think, you know, I've already been in the trade for well over a year, you know, am I likely to be in the trade for the next three years? Most likely. Could I sell out of half of it if ETH's trading at you know, 20K? For sure.